Should I start? Uh, one minute. Uh, Hush, I will introduce. Like, welcome all uh, to the fifth seminar series of our uh, fifth seminar of our in the seminar series. Today, the speaker will be uh, Mr. Harsh Mathur, as a, a PhD scholar uh, from the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. He is now working in the field of uh, solar physics, in particular about the inference of the stratification of magnetic field from the photosphere to the chromosphere using simultaneous multi-line spectropolarimetric observations. He has a keen interest in the uh, chromospheric magnetism to better understand the chromospheric as well as coronal heating problem. To infer the uh, stratification of the magnetic field and other thermodynamic parameters in the solar atmosphere from the spectropolarimetric observations, he utilizes non-local thermodynamic equilibrium inversion radiative transfer algorithms. Additionally, Harsh has a keen interest in instrumentation related to the uh, spectropolarimetry. So today he will be talking about the uh, do the H alpha stock V profiles probe the chromospheric magnetic field and observational perspective. And this uh, uh, seminar will be uh, kind of an interactive session. So people who want to ask questions in between, they can ask. So he'll be happy to answer the questions. And our recording has already started. I'm over to Harsh. Uh, hi, Govind. Uh, thank you for introducing me, and I'd like to thank Indus for giving me the opportunity to present my work. So, as uh, Govind said, my title is uh, To the HL5 Stokes, we profile probe the chromosphere magnetic field, and this work was done in collaboration uh, with the uh, Stockholm Group. And from IA, it was me, Nagraju, and Jay, and from the Stockholm, it was Jaime. And uh, so uh, coming to a context, as we all aware, like coronal heating problem is a very important problem in solar physics. And typically this is a curve which is presented. So this is a photospheric height where temperature is 4,000 and we reach temperature minimum and we goes up and we reach chromosphere, then we reach transition region and we reach corona. And we see that the temperature reach a million Kelvin. So, uh, and we can also see in uh, these uh, SDO images, which actually probe different, different temperature regimes. So for example, C35 is probing 2.5 million Kelvin corona. And like if you see uh, a 600 angstrom image, it is probing chromosphere, just probing around 10,000 uh, Kelvin uh, temperature. So different, different wavelengths are probing uh, different heights. And uh, we know that uh, uh, the temperature as we go up in the atmosphere, it increases. So uh, why it is so, it's the, there are two uh, mechanisms which are proposed with, one is magnetic reconnection, another is wave heating, which is uh, either it is al by through alpha waves or other is slow and fast MHD waves. So in the right, uh, I have a very good picture which actually uh, shows the magnetic structure of uh, a typical quiet sun. So we can see there's a network fields which are like very dense in between the inter-network fields. And as they go up, the magnetic field expands and they uh, make different, different magnetic structures. So waves typically uh, use the magnetic field lines as a waveguide and if these magnetic field lines reconnect to change, I mean, the reconfiguration, it will be a magnetic reconnection. In either cases, uh, uh, the heat can transfer from the lower atmosphere uh, to the upper atmosphere. Uh, so that's why uh, magnetic field measurements are important if we want to understand uh, mag uh, heating of the upper atmosphere. So how do we actually measure these uh, magnetic fields? So we, uh, like, as we all know, HMI uh, gives a very regular magnetic field of around 12-minute uh, cadence, and SOLIS also gives daily magnetic field. Uh, so this uh, mechanism through which these photospheric magnetic fields are measured is very well established. We know that the plasma is, uh, uh, we can uh, assume that LT is a good approximation, and uh, it's typically uh, excitations are dominated by collisions. Now coming to chromospheric magnetic field, uh, it is not so simple uh, compared to photosphere. Typically, chromosphere is not in a relative equilibrium and scattering and energy effects are uh, more important. Even like uh, chromosphere is defined in such a way like uh, where H alpha line forms. So in the right, we have a line core image in H alpha and line core image in calcium 8542. And in the wings, uh, I have, uh, I mean, in the bottom, we have line core image and there's a wing image. We can clearly see that there are different structures. Uh, so now coming to uh, more, uh, coming to uh, specifically magnetic field measurements, uh, although uh, H alpha line, I mean, defined it is where the H alpha line forms, but H alpha line is not used to measure the magnetic field. So like in the right, I have a 
uh, helium Stokes V profile. So this is helium continuum intensity, helium adsorption, that is the line core, and QNV profiles of helium. In the bottom, I have calcium 285-42 Stokes I and uh, QNV profile. So typically, these two lines are used. So why this? is because uh, typically the formation of these lines are relatively well understood and inversion codes are typically uh, available to the community. Uh, now, uh, these are typical examples of uh, chromospheric magnetic field, exa uh, like recent example, like uh, sea glass solar flare observed by Yadav, and this is a photospheric magnetic field, and this was a chromospheric magnetic field. This was uh, measured using 8542 line, and this was using 6173. And uh, another in the right, it was made. Uh, this is a uh, during umbral, umbral flashes. Uh, so this is a time variation of uh, line of sight magnetic field measured during helium one ten at thirty line. So although we have these uh, uh, two lines to measure magnetic field, it is uh, <clears throat> there are still some limitations. For example, a ten at thirty line depends on uh, coronal and transition region UV radiation, and it samples upper chromosphere. What it means is like. Uh, uh, it the at 10 at 30 line typically does not form in quietum. It will only form over active region uh, like sunspot or plages. So you need a very, I mean, you need this emission, I mean, radiation from the corona to uh, come towards, I mean, illuminate the chromosphere, then only this line will form. And the problem with calcium to IR line is it's uh, like if as the temperature increases, for example, during a heating event such as flare, uh, calcium 2 will get ionized to calcium 3. And when that happens, the calcium uh, 80 40 line will sample the lower photosphere. For example, uh, we can see in this particular image. So this is a photospheric magnetogram and this is chromospheric magnetogram. And this portion was inverted by Yadav. And we can clearly see the uh, magnetic structure is very similar to photosphere and um, chromosphere. Also, this so in the in, in flare. So uh, now. So thus, uh, HRF polarimetry uh, could be a potential chromospheric diagnostic. That is because uh, first, uh, it in the lower chromosphere, although it is sensitive to temperature, the opacity of HRF line. However, as we come to higher atmosphere, the opacity of line is more sensitive to ionization degree and radiation field, which is insensitive to local temperature variations over time, but determined by mass density of hydrogen. And uh, it has also been shown using simulations by Borgen that uh, H-alpha line retains opacity in flaring active regions. Thus, the polarimeter in H-alpha line simultaneously along with other chromospheric lines such as 8542 or 10 could be a could provide reliable stratification of magnetic field in the chromosphere. Uh, so, although uh, the H-alpha line could be a good chromospheric diagnostic, uh, there are only few examples available in the literature. Uh, uh, typically, H alpha line is only used in identifying and classifying classifying events through imaging and spectroscopic data. The reasons are that uh, it has been shown using 1D RT calculations by Sokas Noer and Ottenbro that Stokes profiles of the H alpha line uh, show very uh, large sensitivity to photospheric magnetic field. For example, we can see this particular curve. So this is a response function of uh, magnetic field. Of, to the Stokes V profile. So, what is response function tells us is how this Stokes uh, profile change if a uh, parameter is perturbed. So, in particular, we are talking about here line of sight magnetic field. So, we can see that along log to minus six, which is typically chromospheric height, although there is sensitivity, there is high sensitivity around log to equal to zero or minus two or minus two, so around photosphere. So, that means that line core region is actually sensitive to chromosphere as well as photosphere. Similarly, uh, we have a sense uh, around temperature. This is a response function to temperature. There also we can clearly see that there is sensitivity in the photosphere as well as the chromosphere in the same line core regime. And another uh, limitation of this uh, line is it has been shown using J. Stephen and Trollebuno that uh, in case of weak fields, it is uh, sensitive to atomic polarization. That's typical inversion codes like stick or nickel which typically assume 1.5D uh, approximation cannot work. Uh, another uh, problem, but uh, it has been shown using uh, like later, like because the previous uh, example was done using 1D calculations, using 3D calculations by Linards, they have shown that uh, uh, 1D is not a good approximation. And if uh, these conditions, for example, non LD electron density and S status equilibrium and CRD are assumed, the H alpha line can be a very good, I mean, 
very uh, model very realistically. So this uh, curve is uh, clearly shows a granulation pattern in the line core when using one D radiative transfer, and this shows a typical uh, fibrillar structure uh, if when using three D calculation. So the it means that the problem was with the modeling, not with the line itself. And uh, however, this uh, uh, they have not modeled the Stokes V. They have only modeled the Stokes I. So thus, uh, it, uh, thus uh, I mean, the idea is we can use H alpha line along with uh, existing uh, lines, for example, calcium, to uh, investigate the chromospheric magnetic field. So to investigate the diagnostic potential of the H alpha line using observations, uh, we had access to simultaneous observations uh, of a pore in calcium two line and H alpha line, and we. What we did is infer the stratification of a uh, magnetic field using calcium to eighty five hydro line. Then we infer the magnetic field of, from the H alpha line using weak field approximation. Then we compare the stratification. That is our main idea, and we see like what we find. So these are our observations. So observations were taken from a Dunn Solar Telescope uh, on December four, two thousand eight, using spinor instrument. Uh, spectral resolution, uh, it's, I mean, moderate, not great, but okay. Uh, resolution power spectra 20,000 and spectral sampling we have very good and uh, like 22 million angstrom, sorry, and 33 million angstrom. And uh, along with the H alpha line, we have in the blends of the ATF photo line are also recorded as well as in iron 656 and angstrom blend is also recorded. So for example, I can use these two I, I, um, silicon and iron blend along with the AT photo line to uh, in further stratification instead of just getting a one value and mu of the observation is pointed so little bit off center from the disk observations are so wait uh -huh. so these are my observations <coughs> so uh, this is i think calcium uh, this is of i mean a and b panel are basically calcium h alpha uh, for i mean line wing image basically represent photosphere and the c and d are calcium and h alpha line core image so they are actually typical uh, chromosphere and in between i have in the contour i have marked the location of the pore and uh, the e panel is basically weak field approximation done from the calcium and f panel is a uh, milne addington inversion of the iron 6569 line so in this uh, field of view uh, we should see the interesting part is uh, the polarity is changing from the uh, uh, positive to negative like e, this region and compare this region so this is actually a positive polarity region in the chromosphere because it is sampling calcium is chromospheric line but 6569 iron line samples photosphere so this is actually a negative polarity region so point is uh, if we have because we have h alpha line we can compare what does h alpha line gives whether it gives a positive polarity or negative polarity and we can clearly see uh, i mean what uh, height it is sampling uh, now coming uh, now uh, some sample profiles. So uh, to clearly uh, show this point, for example, we see this green profile mark in this particular contour. So this is my calcium to 8542 line, and this is the Stokes V profile. So this clearly shows a negative sign in the Stokes V. But if we see in the line core, we have a positive sign in the Stokes V, which clearly uh, says that uh, the magnetic, I mean, magnetic sign reversal is there unless uh, and green color profile is also almost uh, there is no emission feature that's why the sign of the stokes v should be the sign of the magnetic field and uh, similarly this is h alpha line this also shows opposite sign like 6569 uh, now this has this so is nine negative sign of stokes v and this is positive sign of the stokes v in h alpha and other profile typically shows same sign like for compared where mouse is this positive sign and positive sign so it is matching uh, uh, to in the both regions. So these are so this is uh, purple line. It is somewhere uh, here, so which is the same polarity in both the uh, photosphere and uh, chromosphere. Uh, similarly, we can compare the spectral images as well. So uh, like in this particular region, we can clearly see this Stokes V sign changing as we move from the wings of the calcium line to the core of the calcium line. So this black and white, like from this to this, this is actually a photospheric signature. And this is actually probing the chromosphere. So uh, thus, it is actually a positive polarity in the core and negative polarity in the wing. Uh, so it is actually uh, showing that different regions of the line are sampling different heights 
and because there's a different polarity of magnetic field at different heights, there's a different sign of the Stokes T. Similar thing we can also see in the H alpha line. So it is also changing to black, white, and black and white. Although the uh, signal is very less, but we can clearly see this uh, feature very evident. And uh, same thing we can also see like uh, in this pro particular profile. So this is negative polarity here. So in the wings, we have negative polarity in the line, but when we go to the core, the polarity changes to positive. Same thing we can uh, uh, see in the H alpha line. So photosphere, uh, iron line, we have negative polarity. And in the wings, we have negative polarity of H alpha line. But as we move up, uh, we can clearly see the polarity changing to positive, thus uh, chromospheric uh, polarity in the line core. So from observation itself, we can directly see that H alpha line is actually probing the chromosphere, I mean, in the line core, and the wings is actually probing the photosphere. Now, uh, what we, uh, inversions, uh, we did use uh, a stick inversion code, which has RH code as a forward modeling engine. We inverted calcium, silicon, and uh, iron line simultaneously. CRD is assumed. And uh, atomic parameters taken from world database and details. We just upgraded a stick to include the JK coupling in Kuruk's lines. Uh, so what improvement it did is, uh, OK, I'll come here. So what JK coupling typically does is it changes the land factor of a particular uh, level. So when you do that, uh, eventually you get higher signal of Stokes V. I mean, amplitude of Stokes V becomes larger because the land factor increases. Uh, so now coming to the inversion process, uh, like people who are unfamiliar with inversions. So it's uh, basically two loop process. So one loop is basically your forward modeling engine and the outer loop is actually your inversion engine. So how it actually works is I have observations and I want to reach to model atmosphere. So what I typically do is I assume one model atmosphere. Say, for example, I assume some falsy model atmosphere, which is quite sun. Now, I will, from the model atmosphere, I come, I compute what are the collisions, and th there will be some magnetic field, which is also assumed in the model. Then I will uh, give it to the statistical equilibrium equations. So this, uh, I am, this time I will uh, assume that the mean radiation field is zero. Basically, what I want to eventually find is, uh, I want to know the radiation field and I want to know the level populations. So if I know both these things, then I can uh, solve the RT equation and get the synthetic profiles. But uh, so I typically assume is radiation field is zero and I calculate the level populations uh, using this equation. And then I, uh, I give the level populations to radiation transfer equation, which gives me a mean radiation field. Then that is fed back to a study, I mean, SEE, and then we'll change the again level population. Then this circle keeps happening until the populations and the radiation feed both become convergent up to a certain limit. When that happens, uh, we run a formal solution and we get synthetic Stokes parameters. Then Stokes parameters are actually matched with the observations. And uh, if a convergent is reached, that means the chi square is, I mean, minima is reached then it is fun. Otherwise, if it is not reached, then we just perturb the model atmosphere again, and this whole process goes again. So uh, this is a typical inversion process. Now, after uh, from the inversions, uh, for completeness, uh, uh, this is my uh, result. So log tau uh, minus one. So typically log tau is basically log of continuum optical depth. So what uh, Typically, uh, uh, so log tau of uh, continuum optical depth as minus one is actually representing of photospheric heights, and minus four is actually a lower chromosphere, and minus three is typically uh, where reverse granulation. I mean, we can say, but it just, I mean, it's somewhere in between chromosphere and photosphere. So as we can see that uh, the photospheric temperature map. So this is a so first row is actually temperature and the second row is uh, line of sight velocity and the third is the turbulence, uh, micro turbulence. So now, uh, so temperature maps in the photosphere and chromosphere are very close to the images of the line core and uh, wing. So for example, if I go back to the previous slide, so this is the line core image and line wing image. Now, if you go see the temperature map, they have a uh, I mean, uh, the, they look uh, very close to the line wing and line core image. So that means uh, the inversions have succeeded in uh, reproducing temperature. And in between, we have a temperature at minus three, which is uh, typically reverse of uh, uh, this. 
uh, and these are uh, my velocity typically uh, we have actually set the in the photosphere in the pore uh, velocity as zero because we assume that the darkest portion of the umbra or the pore uh, should be at rest so using that assumption all other velocities are set and uh, this microturbulence are typically uh, just computed to uh, fit the broadening of the line so i only have microturbulence it's log to equal to minus z region Otherwise, uh, almost uh, negligible microturbulence and maximum is around 5 km per second, which is at only few places. On average, it is 3 km per second. Uh, now, coming to the qualitative results. So, for example, uh, this is a Stokes I profile of 4 and this is Stokes V profile of 4. So, in the dotted lines are actually observed profiles and the solid lines are actually the fits. So, we can see that uh, it has reproduced very well. Even the asymmetry is also reproduced very well up to, although this small portion is not fit, but it's still the Stokes free profile is asymmetric. Com I mean, the asymmetry is reproduced and we have a temperature maps, which uh, I mean, so it is, uh, we are uh, getting temperature minimum and we have increasing compared to median profile. Uh, like we can see that uh, the temperature in the median profile is around, around 6.1 and uh, the Pore temperature is around 6000 Kelvin. Uh, so, this uh, is actually a uh, the second profile is actually a surge flow profile. So, this is uh, uh, somewhere here, this bright, uh, this brightening where temperature emission is there. So, th here we can see that there's an emission feature in the Stokes I. Uh, and uh, because of this, there is a sign reversal of the Stokes V also, which is also we have fit very well. And that there's a temperature rise also of around 800 Kelvin or something. Like we can clearly see in this particular 4.5 uh, locked out. Uh, now coming to Lyon velocity, uh, median profile is uh, around minus 3 because we have assumed 4 is 0. At uh, This is my reference. Uh, then we have magnetic field of 800 Gauss in the photosphere and 400 Gauss in the chromosphere. Similarly, we have... Uh, uh, in the search flow, we have magnetic field of uh, around um, 4, yeah, 0.5 in 250 uh, Gauss and uh, 200 Gauss in the, because so the magnetic field is actually increasing in the search flow in the chromosphere. And uh, the third profile is the most interesting one because this is the profile which is uh, at the region where the polarities are actually changing. So here we can clearly see that the uh, profile is typical uh, nominal absorption profile. But still, the Stokes V profile is actually going uh, below zero, and that is, it is going negative in the wing and going positive uh, in the core. So, uh, and we can clearly see the magnetic field is minus around 200, 220 Gauss uh, in the photosphere and plus 200, 220 Gauss in the chromosphere. Uh, but, and the temperature structure is almost similar to the median profile. And uh, to understand better this, uh, I have also got response functions. So response functions is typically like how the Stokes uh, parameters change if you perturb a physical parameter. So this is a response function of linocyte magnetic field. Uh, and uh, this is at line wing and the green one is at line core. That means that if you change a uh, magnetic field uh, in at around minus 1 point minus 1 or minus 1.8, the uh, the what will, you will see is the uh, the change in the line wing, uh, and if you change in the line core, then you will uh, uh, so a point being <coughs> one second. Uh, so point being, uh, you have uh, this is a my log tau scale, and this part represents photosphere and chromosphere. So when line core is actually probing the uh, chromospheric height, and line wing is actually probing the photospheric height, and uh, because uh, so this is. So this wavelength position is chosen at these particular positions. Now uh, coming to the V field approximation, we have uh, uh, used uh, this typical uh, formula. For you. So we just uh, use the Stokes E and derivative of Stokes I and some constant value, and we get the wavelength. I mean, line cell magnetic field. Only thing you need to decide is uh, what wavelength range we can use. So we have chosen three wavelength ranges. One is at the line core plus minus 0 0.25 angstrom. Uh, line wings and full spectral range. Uh, and we have excluded these blends for technical reasons because we don't want our results to be influenced by uh, some other blends which come in the line. Uh, now, these are uh, comparison of magnetic fields. So,
So this is actually a photospheric magnetic field, which we can clearly see the positive polarity everywhere and negative polarity here. And this is chromospheric magnetic field. These both are derived from the inversions of the calcium line. So, uh, so uh, the, the, the polarity is actually uh, positive in this region. So this region is our uh, main interest, interesting region. Now, when we do the weak field approximation of uh, H-alpha line, we can clearly see that the positive is uh, the, the positive polarity of the magnetic field in this region. And uh, also the overall structure of the magnetic field, that is the morphology, is very similar between B panel and the C panel. Now, uh, if you compare the panel D and panel A, you will see that the this uh, magnetic structure is very similar. Although uh, the magnetic field is almost uh, zero here, I mean the negative polarity is not able uh, we could reproduce this, but the overall structure is very similar to photosphere. This so this clearly says that when the H alpha line wing, if you try to calculate magnetic field, you will have significant photospheric contribution. But uh, line core is very, very evident that it is probing the chromosphere and uh, uh, the polarities are also uh, matching. And uh, uh, and the same thing we see with the uh, when we use the H alpha line as a full, like instead of choosing a wavelength regime, again, we see that the structures are similar to panel A. The bottom two and the last two plots are mod B minus A. So uh, this is uh, basically we have, what we did is Take the magnitude of this minus magnitude of this and uh, this minus this. So what typically this is, it tells us like whether magnetic fields are increasing or decreasing. So for example, we see this C minus B plot. So everywhere uh, we see that the magnetic fields are actually decreasing. So uh, so what it means is uh, like uh, H alpha line is uh, uh, actually sampling a uh, lesser field, like whatever field distance we got from the H alpha line is actually lesser from the calcium line. And uh, that is could be expected because like as the magnetic, if we assume that H alpha line is sampling higher in the atmosphere than the calcium line, then the field can expand and the, we can get a lesser field value. So, and we also uh, did scatter plots. So for example, this is weak field approximation of the calcium line. And we also compare with the inversions, for example, to uh, compare the validity of the uh, uh, inversion. So we see that uh, inversion results are very much uh, uh, matching with the weak field approximation of calcium. So this is just a verification plot. But the, the right one plot is actually the H alpha line core uh, magnetic field, which is from the WFA. And that is compared with the weak field of calcium line. So there we can clearly see that uh, H alpha line is getting almost half the magnetic field strength with uh, some scatter. And similarly, with when we compare uh, magnetic field from the HLF line to from the inversions, we again see the same behavior. Uh, same, it is almost half. And the last part is when we uh, did the HLF, um, WFA on the full HLF line and compared with the inversion. So this is, uh, then we get a slope of 0.42. So this is as such, in a way it is not interesting, but the last three studies by a few people have also found the same slope. So that also shows that uh, our validity, I mean, the validity of our method. So this is, these two plots are our main results that uh, H-alpha line is actually sampling the uh, chromosphere because it has uh, the uh, similar magnetic field structure from the calcium and we have lesser field strength. So the conclusions are uh, that uh, Summary and conclusions, we have a very a negative polarity region in the photosphere and uh, chromosphere is polarity polarity region. And that region, we actually, uh, we, we, we inverting everything and then we compare, we compare using that region. So that region says that uh, when the magnetic field is strong and the Zeeman regime line core is sensitive to upper chromosphere magnetic fields, uh, which are uh, higher than that of inversion from the calcium line. Or that can also be possible that although H alpha is sensitive to the chromosphere magnetic fields, uh, the magnetic field strengths inferred from the H alpha line are systematically underestimated because we see that it is following a very linear line. So it could be sampling the same height regime, but the field strengths are underestimated. So our last conclusion is uh, further observations as well as modeling work is required to understand the uh, diagnostic potential of H alpha line. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Harsh. So uh, now the window is open for questions.
and we can also will also look into the questions that are posted in the chat box also so send questions directly yeah sure okay i will read the uh, question for you in the chat box uh, the stock we profile in, uh, in the alpha line or any other line mentioned in this stock is it because of semen splitting or this another phenomenon for the generation of circular polarization uh, in the spectral lines uh, for the comparison of uh, in the like i would just talk about the sun in the sun if you see circular polarization and in the photosphere and chromosphere that is typically because of magnetic field so i have a extra slide so that is because of uh, zeeman effect only like is it if there a I mean circular polarization in the i mean it's visible or nir line i will uh, assume that it is because of zeeman splitting okay the question was from sayuf yeah fine so is there any other questions Okay, it seems that uh, no other questions are coming. Uh, thank you, Harsh. It was a very wonderful talk on a new perspective on the uh, chromospheric magnetic field uh, probing. And uh, we wish you all the best for your uh, coming things.